good morning students we have come to the end of the session end of the unit and the end of uh, quantum mechanics too so this is the last topic uh, in unit 5 that is second quantization of klein gordon field in first quantization we quantize the particles and thereby we quantize the energy of the material particles and in the second quantization we are going to quantize the field and thereby we are going to quantize the energy of the photon so one is the energy of the material particle then another one is the energy of the photon this is the second quantization and that is first quantization and that is from particles to wave and here it is from waves to particles so which bring out uh, the fact which is nothing but dual character dual wave character dual nature of wave dual nature of quantum particle and uh, the main topic is the second quantization of klein gordon field and of course we know in uh, relativistic uh, quantum mechanics we learnt two major equations so one is on klein gordon equation and another one is on dirac hamiltonian so both the equations are very important in learning relativistic quantum mechanics klein gordon uh, equation which is says about uh, the second order differential equation in space and time whereas in uh, dirac hamiltonian all dirac hamiltonian which bring out the fact of first order differential equation in space and time of course both are linear equations but the very important difference is that uh, klein gordon uh, equation will give us the negative probability density so that's a major uh, discrepancy in learning klein gordon uh, relativistic equation so negative probability and we know that uh, only positive probability exists so we are when you are going to calculate any probability then we will always think out only the probability should be very positive it should lie between 0 and 1 so it will never have a negative probability so to avoid or to eliminate uh, the discrepancy of negative probability we are going to quantize the field so that's the idea so we are going to use modified uh, klein gordon uh, uh, equation and we are going to quantize the field in order to eliminate the negative probability which occurs in klein gordon modified field so that's the idea then in uh, in learning about fields we know already field functions field operators so field operators are nothing but we have phi which depends on x and t so which is one uh, one of the field operators then another field operator is nothing but your phi so your uh, phi and phi phi is the field function phi is the momentum density so field operators in which we have major two entities one is a field function which depends on x and t position and time and uh, we have a phi phi function phi operator which is nothing but your momentum density so that also depends on position and t and this uh, field function uh, which will be written in terms of operators so these operators are raising and lowering operators annihilation and destruction operators not only uh, those operators but also it will be included in terms of plane wave equation so any wave any uh, wave amplitude which propagates in the space with respect to time this is nothing but your field function this field function mainly depends on both the factors which is nothing but your operators so raising operator and lowering operator as well the wave function so this is uh, the idea so with this uh, uh, small introduction we will learn in detail about second quantization of klein gordon fields okay so we are going to consider a complex field so we are going to consider a co complex field and of course uh, uh, as we discussed earlier there exists uh, real field as well as complex fields real fields means we have a photon which will create a particle and an antiparticle that's all so we have a photon and particle and antiparticle whereas suppose we are going to go for a number of particles so more than two particles so we will have a number of proto uh, photons number of uh, particles corresponding number of antiparticles but we do not know which combination will take place 
so for that we have to go only with the complex field for real field we have a photon which creates a particle and antiparticle if there are number of particles number of antiparticles more than two particles more than two antiparticles we have to go only with the concept of complex fields so now we are going to consider a complex field phi of phi of x comma t so your field function which depends on position and time satisfying modified klein garden equation we are going to quantize the field for quantizing the field we are going to expand phi and phi 2 in terms of creation and annihilation operator so we are going to have creation and annihilation operators so creation and annihilation operators so with the corresponding plane wave functions so these two equations already we studied in uh, discussion discussion with the complex fields we discussed all those wave uh, functions these functions in real and complex fields so this is your phi phi 1 this is your phi 2 okay so we have uh, two particles two particle system so any complex field is described by the field variables as it is given by this your phi equals phi 1 plus i phi 2 divided by root 2 and phi star taking the complex conjugate will give you this so but they are not hermitian so very important thing they are not hermitian because phi is not equal to phi star now we are going to use the equation 10.134 so 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 here you have phi 1 and phi phi 2 you substitute for phi 1 and phi 2 and get the expression for your phi get the um, expression for your phi 1 and phi 2 substitute here get the expression for your phi star so phi star becomes now phi dagger because of operators okay so now using 10.134 and 10.135 equation 10.136 can be written as exactly like this so you have this so similarly corresponding phi dagger will be exactly like this equation 10.138 138 now we are going to have this expression we are going to simplify these two equations as like this okay so now you just for example we have ak plus r minus which is equal to ak1 plus r minus i ak2 divided by root 2 so wherever you find plus you substitute ak plus wherever you just find minus you substitute a minus here that's all so now you are going to add and divide by 2 see here according to this we we'll have to add and divide by root 2 okay so these two equations will become according to so now ak1 plus i ak2 divided by root 2 can be can be written as ak plus and what of this one you are going to take the dagger here see here your plus i ak2 dagger so this will become minus see this will become minus this is a real part real part so real part means a dagger will be a dagger itself so a will be a dagger itself that is a k of 1 dagger equals a k of 1 so this will become minus sign correct you are minus sign so so we can write this as a minus see a k minus so this expression can be simplified as a k minus this expression can be simplified as a plus and similarly this this can be simplified as a minus a k minus and what of this one again you are going to take the dagger so this will become plus so you have to simplify this as a plus see here a plus so this is for a minus and this is for the expression for your uh, phi dagger and that is for your phi of x which we have already seen earlier okay now these things are very important we are going to quantize the field when you are going to quantize the field we have to substitute surely some quantization rule which which obeys some commutation rules commutation rules between creation and annihilation operators as well field operators so we will have to substitute so the creation and annihilation operators for each field 1 and 2 and quantization rule which satisfy the following commutation rules okay this is the following commutation rules the commutator of ak comma ak dagger which is equal to i h cross the delta function and similarly this one which is equal to zero okay your ak1 akj which is equal to ak i dagger ak j dagger which is equal to zero and for the commutation rule for uh, field operators are nothing but this okay it's given by this so now we are going to use these uh, commutation rules and we are going to simplify this uh, field equations now the operators ak plus and ak plus dagger are intermittent as destruction and creation operator so this is your destruction operator 
and this will be your creation operator for positively charged particle see plus is here for positively charged particle and this is for negatively charged particle so this will be your destruction operator and this will be your creation operator for the negatively charged particle the expansion of phi of x in terms of a complete set of orthonormal solutions of klein modified klein garden equation necessary to quantize phi 1 and phi 2 okay so the reason is we are going to obtain only the negative probability for klein garden equation in order to eliminate the negative probability we will have to it's necessary to quantize the fields so that's the idea so at the end we are going to have uh, this expression in fact two particles differ in charge introducing the occupation number so this is your occupation number operators from this case for the positively charged particle the number operator is given by this expression and for the negatively charged particle the number operator is given by this expression okay the above equations turn out to be equations of charges so ultimately we are going to we are going to quantize the charges because the complex field describes the charge system so any complex field that will interpret interpret that can be interpreted in terms of charge system so therefore it will describe the charge particles in the quantized theory okay the total number of charge operators for the complex field is given by this expression so we know that already uh, for example when you take uh, this expression we know already the charge density rho which is nothing but charge per unit volume can you remember this equation this is very simple one your rho will be dq by dx cube your rho will be d cube divided by d tau that is that is your uh, charge density which is given by charges per unit volume here we are talking about only electronic charge so that's why it is i have multiplied by e so e rho d tau so this is your q so look at the same expression you have so q equals instead of rho rho is charge density the expression for charge density which we learned in unit 1 which is nothing but i times phi dagger phi dot minus phi phi dot dagger d tau which we learned already okay so using this expression we can have this so your phi dot is nothing but d phi by dt and your phi dot dagger is nothing but d phi dagger by dt so our aim is to get q our ultimate our aim is to get q what is what is q q is nothing but total number of charge operators and thereby we can get the eigen value of charge operators so ultimate aim is we are going to quantize the field so we are going to quantize the field and thereby we are going to get the total number of charges ultimately we can get the eigen value of the charges so that's the idea now already we know the expression for your phi dagger and phi we can substitute here so your phi of x is given by this expression correct so this is what we learned just now your phi of x now we are going to introduce now kx can be written as kx minus omega t because we are going to include the time coordinate too so time coordinate x y z and t so four coordinates we are going to include so your kx becomes k mu x mu which is equal to kx minus omega t wherever you find kx you substitute kx minus omega t in this expression that's all so you have kx here so instead of kx you substitute kx minus omega t use this equation okay now first we are going to use this equation we need to find out you have, you have phi okay you have phi this phi is replaced by um, substitution of kx minus omega t so wherever you find kx kx minus omega t is replaced now now here it is phi dagger we need to have phi dagger we need to have d phi by dt we need to have again d phi dagger by dt so for that you have a, a phi dagger using this one phi dagger can be written as exactly like this so your phi dagger is this one and we are going to have d phi by dt you have to differentiate with respect to t so d phi by dt is nothing but your phi dot we are going to differentiate this equation so this equation with respect to t that will give you we have see here you have minus i omega see here minus i omega k see minus i omega k and here you have you have plus i omega k correct here when i am going to differentiate with respect to t you will get plus i omega k i have inserted i can insert one minus sign and pull minus sign out so that will become minus i omega k as common any doubt differentiating this will give you this 
Similarly, when you are going to differentiate pi dagger with respect to time t, again uh, this term will give you minus i omega k and this term also will give you plus i omega k and you can pull it out by introducing one minus i. So, we can pull minus i omega common out. So, now we have computed for pi dagger d phi by dt and d phi dagger by dt. We can substitute all the expression and get the value for q. Is it okay? Any doubt? So, we are going to use. So, we are going to substitute all the four equations in equation 10.145 here and we are going to have equation 10.151. See? We will see one by one. So, we have pi dagger d phi by dt. So, your phi dagger is here, d phi by dt is here. Okay? Your phi dagger is here, d phi by dt. You are going to multiply these two. When you are going to multiply these two, you will get 1 divided by root 2 multiplied 1 by root 2 will be 1 by b. Then 1 by root 2 omega k multiplied by 1 by root 2 omega k will give you this is omega k, this is omega k prime. Okay? You should not forget. And we are going to multiply this factor with this factor. See here, the first factor will be as I said, 1 by c here. 1 by b, first point. Second point will be 1 by root 2 multiplied 1 by root 2 will give you 1 by 2. See 1 by 2. Your i, here 1 i is here. Okay? You have i. So, here, in the formula itself i is here. i e. So, you have i e divided by 2b. So, sigma summation over k k prime 1 divided by root of omega k omega k prime. Now, we have this term multiplied by this term as I said. See, phi dot first term will be your phi dagger multiplied by d phi by dt. So, this term multiplied by this term. So, your a k minus e power i k h minus omega t multiplied by this term. See here, multiplied by this term. See here, this term multiplied by this term. So, this is your phi dagger. This is your d phi by dt. This is your phi dagger. This is your d phi by dt. And I minus i omega k, I have pulled out. Okay. Similarly, for the next one, here it is minus is here. Okay, minus phi d phi dagger. So, you have, uh, you have phi. Phi is here. d phi dagger by dt is here. You have minus sign. Already one minus sign exists. So, minus minus will become plus. So, this will become plus. I omega k. And I have uh, multiplied phi multiplied by multiplied d phi d, d phi dagger by dt. See, d phi dagger by dt. So that's the idea. Is it okay? Now, we are going to simplify. You multiply this term with this term, multiply this term with this term. And second one, you are going to multiply this term with this term and multiply this term with this term. So you have four terms. And similarly, you are going to multiply this term with this term and this term with this term and this term with this term and last two terms. So you have again four terms. See here, we have four terms separately I have written. I have not disturbed anything. Only thing is, just we have multiplied. See here, this term with this term. We will go for first, first term. So, a k minus multiplied by a k prime plus. See here, a k minus multiplied by see a k prime plus. And you have e power i k x minus omega t multiplied by e power i k prime c i k prime x minus omega t. Remaining term, we can, we can get it. Okay? It is very easy. Is it okay? Now, next thing is, we can simplify this term multiplied by this term, these two terms. Okay? So, that will give me, that will give me e power i k plus k prime. See here, you have your e power i k x minus omega t multiplied by e power i k prime. So, I can pull common terms i and x out. Remaining term will be k plus k prime. Similarly, we go for the next one. k minus minus k prime. See here, k minus k prime. Then go for the next one. It will be you have minus i k here plus i k prime. I can modify this as minus i k minus k prime. So similarly for the next term. Okay. So now, so now we have we have obtained this one. Coming to the left hand side, we will simplify. Still we will simplify. So here you have uh, I can pull this minus i omega k and here it is plus i omega k. I can pull minus i omega common out taking this sign as negative and positive. I, I repeat, see here, we can pull minus i omega k out. So, so that I can insert one minus sign plus sign minus sign plus sign. 
I can pull 1 minus. So this will become minus i omega k divided by root of omega k omega k prime. Suppose we are going to assume k equals k prime, omega k equals k, k prime using delta function. Okay. Then at, in that case that will give you your uh, omega k divided by your omega k both will get cancelled. Your i multiplied by i will give you i squared minus 1 minus minus plus. So you have e by 2. So left hand side becomes e by 2. Any doubt on left hand side? Okay. So now we will have to simplify this, this term using delta function. So 1 by v we are going to use this one d tau e power i plus or minus k prime x equals 1 by v d tau e power minus i k plus or minus k prime dx equals delta function. And if k equals plus or minus k prime and omega equals omega k prime. So we are going to use this one and this will become delta function. So answer is 1 when k equals k prime. Now look at this equation. So, so we will uh, when k equals minus k prime, see here this equation, when k equals minus k prime, k plus k plus k prime equal to 0. So, when k equals minus k prime, this becomes 1. So, instead of k prime, you have to substitute minus k. Don't forget. And here, k minus k prime. So, k equals k prime. So, instead of k prime, you have to substitute k. Here it is, k minus k prime. So, k equals plus k prime. So, wherever you find k prime, you have to substitute k. And here it is k equals minus k prime. So, wherever you find k, min, k prime, you will have to substitute minus k. Is it okay? So, here look at uh, the next expression. See here the first expression. We will go for the first expression. As I said, k equals minus k prime. So, wherever you find k prime, the answer will be your minus k. See, minus k. The remaining term you can write with the delta function. Answer will be 1. Next, for example, you just take. So, k equals k prime plus k prime. So, wherever you find k prime, you will have to substitute k itself. See, k itself. Is it okay? For, the, for example, next one. k equals k prime. So, wherever you find k prime, you will have k. See here, k. The last one will be, wherever you find k, answer will be minus k prime. So, k prime becomes minus k. k prime becomes minus k. See here. And as I said, we will have to change the sign. See, we have changed the sign now. Okay. Now, I have written the same equation here. We are going to simplify again. You just take uh, this expression first. And the last two, this expression also. You just take this expression. So, this expression is nothing but a b minus b a. You just take a b minus b a, which is nothing but a comma b with a commutation relation. You just take these two expression first. So, taking this expression, you will have a b minus b a will give you a comma b commutation relation, answer is 0. So, both will commute to each other. So, answer is 0. And similarly, last uh, these two terms. So, you have a b minus a b minus b a which is equal to commutator a comma b that also will commute. So, answer is 0. So, these two terms, this term and last term will become 0. And we will go for this term. So, this can be written as this term. Okay, This term can be written as a k minus dagger a k minus plus 1. Similarly, this term, this term can be written as a k plus dagger a k plus plus 1. So, now you are going to substitute for this term and this term. So, we are going to substitute minus sign like this. So, I have written minus sign and minus 1. See here? Here because minus sign is there. So, that is why instead of plus sign I have written minus sign here. So, you have to substitute these two terms. Then this term let it be like this. And instead of this term I have substituted plus 1. And this term let it be like this. Now, 1 minus 1 plus 1 will cancel. See here. And these two terms you add these two terms you will get this term. You are going to add these two terms with a negative sign that you get. You will have this term. So, now you are going to introduce the number operator. Okay, Number of operator nk plus can be written as replaced by this nk minus can be replaced by this. Okay, So, your total q, the total charge which is nothing but E summation over k nk plus minus nk minus. Okay, So, this is this equation represents the total charge in terms of number operators where, where nk plus goes with positively charged particle 
n k minus is nothing but for the negatively charged particle. So the above equation turns out to be so these two equations turns out to be charges. So ultimately we have come to the uh, equation for the total charges. Okay, the complex field represents the charge system. Therefore, it will describe the charged particle in the quantized theory. Okay, as I said earlier, we have to get the eigen value of the charges. You just take the eigen value of the charges, nothing but Q equals E small n k plus minus small n k minus. See here, summation over k, of course. Where n plus n minus go, uh, they go with one comma two comma three. They are all numbers up to infinity. So this is your annihilation operator, and this will be your creation operator, and they are all number of particles. So from waves to particles, second quantization. We started with the wave, quantum field, quantum field in the sense electromagnetic field, and we ended up with a number, the number of particles. So this is called a second quantization, and of course these two numbers. It can be either suppose if number is greater than that of this. For example, n plus is greater than that of uh, n minus. Then you will have positive value. Suppose if both are equal, zero. Suppose this value is greater than that of this, you will have negative value. It can be either positive value or zero value or negative value, if, depending on the uh, greater values. Okay. So that's the Hamiltonian, and the total charge operators are expressed in terms of. Number operators, so they are all number operators, and hence they are all diagonal elements. So we have obtained the eigenvalues; they are all diagonal elements. In fact, we use the Hamiltonian to get the energy of the photon. That also will be the diagonal elements. The total of charges also will have diagonal elements. Then uh, momentum eigenvalues also that also will be diagonal elements. So the positively and negatively charged particles have identical properties except the sign of their charges. So to conclude, in relativistic quantum field theory, every charged particle is accompanied by an antiparticle. So we have a particle and an antiparticle having opposite charge. This is a general result in the field theory. Examples of particle-antiparticle pair are the charged pi plus pi minus particles, k plus and k minus particles, and so on. The charge in question may be either electric charge, just now we have calculated, or some other conserved quantum number like. Strange elements are hyperchange. The electrical, the electrically neutral K naught meson has an antiparticle K bar naught, which is also electrically neutral. These two particles carry opposite hypercharges. So that is the end of uh, the second quantization of Klein Gordon field. Okay, so that is the end of quantum mechanics too, and I extend my thanks to everyone that you all have cooperated. Uh, so that i can accomplish uh, the whole video lectures successfully thank you students we will see in the next uh, next topic